Hello viewers, my name is Ashwin Vyanil and I am from I am Trichrapalli and I am going to talk about how hyper-globalization is affecting the Indian economy in a negative way. So, India's economic landscape is undergoing a significant transformation due to the intensifying force of hyper-globalization. While this integration offers undeniable opportunities, like in the past also, globalization has come to India's re rescue many times because it increases the trade opportunities and investment and FDIs. But it's crucial to acknowledge and address the potential challenges. And today I'm going to present a critical analysis of how hyper-globalization is affecting India in a negative manner. So one of the primary concerns lie in the potential erosion of the agriculture sector. Unmitigated import surges could place immense pressure on domestic agriculture, particularly small and marginal farmers. This could lead to price volatility, reduce profitability, and ultimately a decline in rural livelihood. Furthermore, hyper-globalization can intensify the job market vulnerabilities, increase competition from over overseas players, particularly in labor-intensive industries like manufacturing, could result in job displacement. <clears throat> this necessitates proactive measures to enhance worker skills and foster adaptability within the workforce. The in issue of income inequality also merits consideration. While hyper-globalization might benefit large corporations because they are more interested in the quality of things rather than just using the things, the gains may not be equally distributed. Uh, like the poor people are not looking for extra extravagant things. They just want to make the things useful and make them useful for the livelihood. This could widen the income gap, leading to social unrest and hindering inclusive growth. Finally, over-dependence on foreign sources is never good. For example, it's always said that we should never give our information technology outsources to other countries because if they are not able to provide or if we are at war with that countries, our entire information technology system is going to stop, stop where it was. And it's going to affect us in a very negative manner, especially in a world which is so dependent on information technology. So hyper-globalization can uh, exacerbate vulnerabilities to external disruptions in global supply chains. It's critical to maintain a robust domestic manufacturing base to ensure self-sufficiency in, uh, in strategic sectors. But it's not like we can, we can stop globalization alt altogether. So we have to find a perfect balance. A nuanced approach is the key to navigating these challenges. So we can invest in our own infrastructure and human capital so that the dependence on external globalization or external countries is reduced to as much as possible. For example, how Make in Bharat, uh, Make in India is, you know, gaining force. Uh, we have to prioritize in innovation and value-added products to difference itself in the global markets. We have to be known in the global market, like before independence, how India was known as the export hub of, you know, finished clothing lines. We have to make a name for ourselves in the overseas market so that we are the ones who are providing the support and materials to the overseas market. They are dependent on us rather than us being dependent on them. We have to formulate strategic trade policies that balance free trade principles with the protection of domestic interests. You know, just because of increased money due to trade tariffs, we can't let any country, uh, you know, set up their business in India. We have to make sure that our people are comfortable and our people are set up before focusing on others. So, in conclusion, hyper-globalization presents a complex scenario in Indian economy. By adopting a proactive and well-defined strategy, India can harness the opportunities presented by the global integration while mitigating the potential risk. Thank you so much.